please uh, raise your hand if you know what happened on this date. I will see that, that you're Googling it, so don't lie. Like, any one hand, just for me, for my pleasure. Anyone? No? Oh, thank you. Uh, doomsday? Does that ring a bell, maybe? Okay. Oh, well, uh, on this very date, Skynet, as a defensive system, was put online. And uh, people got afraid of it, and they tried to shut it down. And Skynet, in order to defend itself, of course, unleashed the thermonuclear war and started the Terminator series. Uh, so the question is, um, are we there yet in case of machine learning and AI? I personally believe that no, not yet. Um, but the question is maybe now, so where are we then? Let me give you three examples. We are here, what you can see on the picture is a traffic jam in Austin, Texas, caused solely by autonomous cars. They drive into a situation that they couldn't resolve. <laughs> uh, we are here, it's another example, those are two of my colleagues. The guy in the back uh, is trying to impersonate the guy on the printed on page. Uh, he's, tried to, he's trying to authenticate and succeeds to an app using facial recognition as a user authentication mechanism. <laughs> uh, you, will, you are wondering why the eyes are cut out. Uh, those apps use liveness check to verify if there is a human, if you're blinking, so that's why. Uh, and finally, we are here. What you see here is a uh, feature, like one click, uh, Adobe Photoshop. You could remove stuff, and no one will tell that those objects were there. Imagine if you break up with your girlfriend, you can <laughs> erase. You don't have to throw away pictures anymore, right? <laughs> You'll just remove her, and no one will tell that she was there in the first place. So this is our, our place. Um, I decided to leave the boring, I would say, story behind machine learning and AI uh, for later. And now let's see the fancy uh, threads. How many of you, please again, don't lie, raise your hand, use, how many of you, you use either ChatGPT or Google Bart to polish your emails? Yes, perfect. <laughs> That's fine, fine. Please remember, please keep in mind that um, don't put any of your private stuff and company secrets there. Uh, not only because ChatGPT version 4 uses something in case of machine learning which is called reinforcement learning from human feedback, which means it can, uh, after training, it can learn from whatever you put into it. For example, you will put your company secret, someone else might ask ChatGPT, for example, about those secrets, and it may be those secrets will come out. Um, so the threat is a privacy. Actually, uh, Google and Bart uh, had a funny story because your supposedly private chats with Google Bart were indexed by a Google. And you could query those chats online. Unfortunately, it's taken. You, you cannot do that anymore. So threat here is confidentiality or privacy of your data. So please like, keep in mind, using uh, ChatGPT for mails is fine. I will explain it later. But don't put anything uh, sensitive there. Um, so. Another story I wish to tell you is about this song. It was unsuspected reunion of Drake and The Weeknd, and they came back together. Apparently, they split up. I didn't know, but they came back together, and they made this song. And it, the, the video and, and the songs available in streaming platforms went viral. And then Drake came, and he said, quoting Shaggy, I believe, it wasn't me. Instead, it was AI, which was trained using their current song to generate this song. You can find it online, I believe, still. And it's really good fake in case of it's faked audio, right? Uh, another example I have, uh, everybody please meet uh, Jessica. Uh, <laughs> Jessica soon may have an Instagram profile with nice pictures and tons of followers. 
or maybe she will become adult content creator and she will sell her naked pictures online. I don't know, because I invented her like yesterday using like one sentence. Please prepare me a photograph of a shy blonde girl uh, walking into a forest looking into the camera. That's it. And this is damn good fake. Uh, maybe this is funny. Uh, this, on the other hand, is not so funny. Uh, this is K, which uh, was originated in Spain, but I would say that all other countries have the same issue. The kids, underage kids, are threatened with fake nudes of them made with their pictures which they posted uh, on social media. So you take their face, create fake nude, and try to extort something from those kids. That's really an uh, issue. And those fakes are getting better and better. It, will be, it is hard, and it will be harder to tell if it's a fake image or it's a true one. Um, another example, if you're like influencer in China and you earn quite a lot of money, if you spend around $1,000, you can have a deep fake video of you selling whatever you're, you're selling 24 hours a day as a service. You just buy it, you can sleep, and do uh, other fancy stuff as influencers do. And yeah, you, you might say that you can spot if it's fake or not, but it's getting better. Another example, uh, this gentleman is called Gal Zor, and he, on this year's DEF CON, which is most famous hackers conference, um, he showed uh, live, uh, he faked video stream. This is he originally with glasses, and like millisecond later, uh, by the way, I apologize for poor quality screenshots from YouTube. This is he originally, and this is uh, co-founder of DEF CON, Jeff Moss, and with Jeff Moss's voice, Gael is saying the famous DEF CON joke, which means after this talk, uh, DEF CON is officially cancelled. You might say, yeah, it's poor quality, you might guess that it's a fake. Fine. Please remember that this uh, talk uh, live did one guy with a laptop with this. Imagine someone more resourceful in case of generating fake... Uh, I mean, I have mixed feelings about this. From one side, I wish to have it in MS Teams or in Google Meet to just prank my friends. On the other side, imagine doing an uh, online interview with someone. You want to hire someone, and then you get someone else. Uh, it's not, not uh, the skills you wanted to. Another threat is the hallucination of uh, large language models. This is the case from Quora. Uh, can you melt an egg? And the chat GPT hallucinated. Uh, hallucination is a way, uh, is a problem where large language models give you something which is false, ridiculous, or absurd. Not true. But uh, Google, as, as Quora positioned this chat GPT window high, Google picked it up and started serving this as an answer. So what's the problem? You know, uh, like now, the quality of the content in the internet, right? If you fit into that internet uh, hallucinations like this, and then large language models are trained on the internet data mostly, so using the garbage in, garbage out rule, it means that the more garbage you put into the system, the more garbage you will get at the end, uh, the content of the internet will degrade. I imagine fact-checking Wikipedia, for example, as a kid, but you know, my kids now, I don't know, that maybe they believe everything, the, the Google, uh, for example, responds. Okay, uh, that will be the part with threats, and now let's I, I, I keep it entertaining, no worries. The, the, b the boring theory. So, uh, the, the fundamental, machine learning. When I first opened a book of machine learning, I said, hey, 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 it's statistics. I'm like a mathematician uh, by education, and it was like, that's statistics. And yes, it is. What's machine learning? First, it starts with gathering a data set. So, like statistics do. We, we have some data to uh, proce process. And then, uh, al algorithmically, we want to create a stati statistical model, or model for short, which is supposed to solve some real life problem. To give an example of data set, uh, imagine you wish to build a spam filter for uh, email. So data set, um, maybe before that, there are like few ways of, uh, few types of machine learning. One is supervised learning. It means that all elements in the data set contain something which is labeled. In case of spam filter, element 
in the data set would contain, for example, email text and label saying spam or not spam or zero, one, probably numbers there. So that's a label. Um, so that's the, that's the underpinning of it. Uh, so what's AI then, or AGI, which is artificial general intelligence, is something, I mean, there is no one definition which all the world agreed upon, but it, the idea is the concept that it resembles our intelligence. It, can, it should learn, it should reason, makes it experiments. Uh, there, there is a plethora, I think, tests which are supposed to say if we have AI or not. The famous, most famous one is a Turing test. But let me give you two examples of those tests. Uh, first is the IKEA test. It means that we have an AI when it can operate robotic arms and image recognition, analyze the IKEA instructions, which are really good, and build any piece of furniture. Actually, guys in Singapore University created a robot which can build chairs. But from building a chair to building any, to assembling any piece of uh, furniture, um, there is a long way. Let me explain that on another example. Another uh, test is called coffee test. Uh, it's created by Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple. And it goes like this. We have an AI or AGI when uh, the T-100, for example, the Terminator can enter average house, like mine, and make a coffee, which is reasonably good. Uh, and bear with me, like two minutes, I will explain why it's hard. First, you have to enter, the T-100 t has to enter the house, find kitchen, find cups, find coffee beans, understand how do you make a coffee. Either you have a coffee machine or not. I have personally have like six ways of brewing coffee, uh, making coffee, right? So it's like, have to select one. I have manual grinder, so various coffee brewing techniques depend on the cores of the beans, right? So it has to select, and I mean, it goes like this. I think you, s you uh, I believe you see what, what's going on. It's really hard. Using one, as I like the idea with chairs, using one, uh, building one chair is fine, but going to another kitchen uh, will kill this, this Terminator, right? We as humans have like years of experience in various kitchens and we can ask for help, where do you keep cups, for example? Or how do you brew coffee in this beautiful uh, coffee machine, right? So that's why I believe, maybe this is not 100% scientific test, but it tells you uh, where we are and how it will look when we will have an AI. So uh, please welcome the most hyped uh, AI or machine learning we have, which is large language model. Uh, maybe nice, quote, I, I believe, about AI. What's AI? It's statistics on steroids. Uh, in case of large language model, what's a large language model? It's a language model trained on vast amount of data, which is the internet. Large, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> language model uh, is good into picking up the rules, for example, for grammar. It's, it's uh, what it does. It's a probabilistic model, which basically uh, gives you the best fit in a next word or words in a sentence. That's it. So it's perfect for autocomplete. It's perfect for, for example, code generation. F two reasons. First, the programming languages have very strict grammar and set of rules. So language model can learn that and give you nice code. And second, you can quickly verify if the code you wrote, uh, ChatGPT, for example, wrote, will compile or won't. Will the script run, or it hallucinated? For example, inventing library that is not there. Um, we as people are constructed to believe people, for example, who uh, speak fluently with rich vocabulary, and this is what we get from uh, large language models. They are perfect for English, like as uh, they remember uh, the example with emails. That's fine. Uh, if you ask ChatGPT. Uh, for something from your domain, and you, will sh you should be able to spot hallucination quickly, right? It will be perfectly written, but wrong. But the problem is when you ask ChatGPT something outside of area of expertise, you might not notice. It will be perfectly written, but false. Um, so, summary. Uh, let me quickly uh, iterate for like here and now threats that we face. So we have very good fakes, hard to distinguish from picture 
if it's true or not. In case of image, audio, video, we can f have fake people. Please remember my creation, Jessica. Uh, we can f have fake live streams. And another threat, which is a bit separate, the quality degradation of internet's content. Um, are we heading for Skynet? Maybe, I don't know. But if you wish to implement machine learning and AI into your companies, into your products, I believe you should build a very good understanding. It's, <coughs> it's just statistics and mathematics underneath, right, for now. Uh, how it works, what are the possibilities of it, and constraints or restrictions it can have. So, I mean, read, r reading emails uh, is one thing, but uh, making decisions by AI is another thing. Um, I wish to you to remember like one slide uh, from my talk, and this is the slide. Please raise your right hand <laughs> and repeat after Abraham Lincoln and me. <laughs> I won't believe everything I read, hear, and see on the internet. Thank you. <laughs>